So we're starting at electrons today, and we've been talking about how an element uh, loses or gains energy. And what's going to be really, really become important to us in chemistry for basically um, the next couple of units is understanding that electrons are the thing that's going to drive everything that my atom does. So following the Bohr model, we actually determined a way to figure out the exact location of each electron. And we call this the electron configuration. It's essentially a map of where all of the electrons are placed in the specific sized, sorry, this should be sized orbitals. So we know that if we think about the Bohr model, we have these little rings, right? These little orbitals going all around and around. But what we actually figure out is a way to map where each electron is. And this becomes really important because an element will do specific things based on its electron. And so understanding exactly where my electrons are placed is huge for understanding how my elements react together. So we call this the electron configuration. And you guys have this little chart that I would like you to write down into your notes. Uh, it's going to be really important in terms of placing your electrons. And I'll even write it down with you guys so you can start it with me. You're going to say 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s. So the numbers represent the size. Remember when we're looking at the Bohr model, we said that this was n equals 1, n equals 2. Um, so it's just getting bigger and bigger. So those numbers represent getting bigger and bigger. The letters equal shape. And different shapes can hold different a different number of electrons. So in the s orbital, we can hold two electrons. So each of these can hold two electrons. Then we go to a little bit of different shape called the p orbital. So you're going to go 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p. P can hold six electrons, so it's just a little bit different shape that lets us hold more electrons. The next type of orbital is D. D can hold 10. And the final one, which we probably won't even work with, is F. Sorry, 5F, which can hold 14. So notice that each of these goes up by four. There's a difference of four between them. I start with the shape of S. It can hold two electrons. And then six, 10, and 14. So when we draw the Bohr model, we always draw as having two electrons in that inner circle. That's because size one can hold two electrons. Size two can hold two, six, eight electrons. So that next ring we always draw with eight electrons because that's how many electrons that size can hold. Size three, notice that I'm getting bigger and bigger. So here I've got two plus six plus ten, so I'm at 18 electrons and it just keeps going down. So the bigger my size, the more electrons I can hold. Okay, and that's kind of how we figure out the Bohr model, how we do that. So we're going to talk about why there are these diagonal lines through this chart. Why do I have these diagonal lines? Well, if you do something called the diagonal rule, we can start to figure out where those electrons are placed based on lowest energy levels. So remember that electrons want to be as close to the nucleus as possible, and so by doing this uh, electron configuration rule, we actually are able to figure out where I can place those electrons to make sure they're as close to the nucleus as possible. So you start off by just going through, and I think the best way to kind of model this for you guys um, is to actually do one. So calcium is number 20 on the periodic table. That means that it's got 20 electrons. So I need to place 20 electrons with its electron configuration. Lithium is number three, so it's got three electrons. Argon is 18. It's got 18 electrons. And iron, number 26, it's got 26 electrons. So let me show you how I start to place these. I start off by making my first diagonal line through 1s. So I say this one has 1s, and I fit as many electrons as the s shape will hold, which is 2. So I say 1s, 2. As soon as I get back to my s, 
So as soon as I, my diagonal line ends at an S, I'm going to start my new one. So I make another diagonal line, and this time I just go through 2S2. Now I've placed two, four electrons. I've got 20 to go, so I'm going to keep going to my next diagonal line. So I start my next diagonal line. Now I get to go through P. So I'm going to say 2P, and again, I want to fill that as full as it will go. For the P shape, it's going to be 6. 2P, and go all the way back to S. So you have to keep going all the way back to S every single time. So now it's 3S2. So now I've placed 2, 4, 6, so that's 10 electrons, 12. I need to start a new line because I haven't placed all 20 yet. So from 3S, I'm going to start my new diagonal line going from 3P. So 3P6, now I'm at 18, 4S2. And I'm going to stop because if you notice, I've placed 10 electrons here, 10 electrons here. I had to place 20, and so that's the electron configuration for calcium. Okay, so that's all I do. I just keep making these diagonal lines until every single electron that I have to place is placed. So let's look at lithium. Lithium, three electrons, so again, I always start the same place, 1s. That can hold two. And then I'm going to go to my next line, which is 2s. Since I only have one more electron to place, I'm going to say 2s1. So now I have my three electrons placed, but notice that this s orbital isn't as full as it could be because this element is out of electrons. So since lithium only has three, that means I only get to place three electrons total. All right, let's go argon. So they all are going to start off with 1s2, 2s2. Again, I'm just making these diagonal lines. Four electrons are placed, so I've got to go on to my next diagonal line, which is going to be starting at 2p. So 2p, again, p can hold six, all the way back down to 3s, so 3s2. Now I've got 12 electrons placed. I need to start my new line because I'm back at the s. So start it over here, 3P, 3P6, and I've got 10 electrons here, 18 elect, or eight, sorry, eight electrons here, which is eight total. So I'm done making that one. All right, iron. I'm gonna do this one pretty quickly for you guys. Hopefully you're starting to catch on there. They always start 1S2. 2s2, 2p6, we're going to go 3s2, and sometimes I like to box it off by 10 just as a reminder, especially if I'm doing a bigger one like calcium or iron, get a little bit bigger. So then I go 3s2, again, I've reached that 3, I've reached that s line, right? So I've got to start over with my diagonal line. So I'm right here, I ended it, now I want to start a new one, so my first thing I'm going to say is 3p. So 3P6 and 4S2. So I'm at 20 electrons that I've placed so far, but I'm still not done. I've still got six more to place. So I'm here at 4S. I've got to start a new diagonal line, and for the very first time, I'm going to use a D. 3D, and it, since D can hold 10, I've got six electrons left. So I'm going to put six electrons there. Now this is a really, really useful chart for you guys. You don't necessarily have to copy it down, um, but it's, it's important to have. So you might want to just copy it into your, into your notebook. Um, this is a way that you can figure out exactly how each of your um, electron configurations are going to end. So these are my ending. Based on the periodic table, each, each row of your periodic table has a, what we call a period number. So row one will always end in 1s. Row two, if it's the first two columns, is going to end in 2s. So if I look up lithium on the periodic table, notice how it ended in 2s, and this is actually where lithium is placed, 2s1, 2s2. 
as soon as I get to a kind of a lower level of the transition metals, actually I do want you guys to copy this into your notebook, I changed my mind. Uh, as soon as I get to this lower level in transition metals, then I go into D. So if you looked up iron on the periodic table, it's actually in the transition metal block, and it's over one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. If you look up calcium, calcium 4S, it's in the fourth row, because it's number 20, and it's over by two, so 4S2, and that was its ending. 4S2 is calcium's ending. If we look at argon, argon is in the third row, so one, two, three. Sorry, it's in, yeah, so it's in the third row, two, three. Notice that it ends 3P6. So this is a really important chart for you guys to have. You're going to have this down in your notes for tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow.